Hello, welcome to University of Life. I'm Richard Corey. Today, we're talking about what weeds are. And so when we think weeds, most people are going to be considering what they've seen through commercials, through print ad, and these weeds are, are uh, plants that have been demonized. Industrialized products have been created for the eradication of such, uh, such things in your yard. So we can have one thing growing throughout an entire lawn, and that's a grass. So these grasses, uh, they're nice to look at, they're functional to live on, but they're really not doing anything great for the soil, generally speaking, for what we use as a grass in the common, uh, in the common soil, especially in tract housing. So when you look around at any of these uh, uh, yards around you, what you'll find is largely a lot of dandelion, a lot of chickweed, and, uh, and varieties of grasses. And so in this particular area, we're actually in uh, north central Texas right now, and uh, dandelions are really kind of the order of the day in many areas of this particular yard. So what we're looking at in, uh, in the common conversation as weeds, those weeds are actually in nature trying to rebuild that soil. Let's take, for instance, the, the very hard and sticky and painful grass burrs. I'm sure we've all uh, experienced it or known somebody who's experienced those. So what is the purpose of something like that? Well, basically, nature's saying, stay off the, the grass, stay off this piece of property. We're rebuilding right now. So what they're doing is they're actually creating these root networks that help to, uh, help to collect the very loose soil because there's no top soil uh, left virtually. So uh, how, do you, how do you recognize these, uh, these weeds and their uses? Well, the information is everywhere now. You can simply go to the internet and find really anything you need to know about these weeds. Now with that, you'll also find a lot of differing opinions on the, you know, the uses, the important uses of these uh, so-called weeds uh, uh, that are usually herbs in nature and food, or they're dangerous uh, um, uh, conversations. Most of these weeds are not going to have any kind of danger to them uh, per se. They're only going to be things that are providing for the function of the rebuilding of your soil. Dandelions, they just happen to be edible. And there are massive varieties of dandelions, including the wild lettuce. And you really want to consider eating certain things out of your soil. But I would recommend that if you're going to be doing that, you need to know the soil content you're starting with. Any of your heavy metals, arsenic, any other toxins that are uh, prevalent in the soil, and then also your pH conditions, just simply because uh, low pH, extreme low pH, extreme high pH uh, are where you find a lot of those uh, grand imbalances as well, and you know, low pH, especially with the leaching of lead into your soil. So uh, what we usually do is go ahead and build up above that and then let all of that, uh, that top layer, that new layer, build into soil and help recreate the quality of the substructure. For instance, what we have in this small patch right here is we have uh, clusters of chickweed, and chickweed is a very edible uh, uh, and delicious green. You can make an entire salad out of that by itself, and you'll see that uh, interspersed with many other things like henbit. Henbit is, uh, uh, ends up creating, uh, here we go, henbit. You see this beautiful little uh, uh, green leaf here, and it develops a very nice, uh, almost a snapdragon looking uh, uh, orchid-like flower and those are also edible. They're good for chickens as well. Chickens uh, brought into a system like this, they'll actually start scratching through everything and eating most of these greens. So when you see uh, what that actually uh, uh, does for egg production and the health of your birds, then uh, you'll get an idea of what it's gonna do for you. So here's another location in this uh, system here and we have a very solid collection of these dandelions. And so we've all been uh, raised uh, from, uh, under industrial propaganda to believe that there should only be one thing growing in every system. But what you find in this system here are all these dandelion. And these dandelion are all edible and all parts are edible. So uh, don't be afraid to utilize these things. Um, and then when these uh, flowers uh, end up leaving and they leave their seeds behind, propagate those. Really consider propagating those to some of the poor uh, uh, soil sections of your yard. Let them get busy. After you actually recreate that top uh, soil layer with a, a much more healthy uh, medium, growth medium, you can still propagate those dandelions and should still propagate those dandelions. So propagating is spreading those around and cultivating those plants so you get a, a more of an even uh, distribution of your ecologically uh, balancing plants because it also brings in uh, a balance of the animals, of the, uh, of the other life, the animals, the insects, etc., your pollinators. 
And so what you'll end up doing is recreating an entire ecology from below the soil to well, uh, well above the soil all the way up to the tree canopy. Everything becomes alive within this ecostructure. What we're looking at here uh, in, in these uh, various plants, you still see them uh, intermixed with uh, chickweed, the hen bit. We have many other uh, varieties of, uh, of uh, grasses that, that are uh, involved in this as well. So these grasses, along with uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, lighter, uh, lighter greens, what they're doing is they're creating those networks, those rooting networks, like a hair net or a dendritic network that basically starts binding the soil and creating the collection of nutrients, uh, you know, in certain cases, say like with your comfrey. Uh, comfrey is a nitrogen fixer as well as a dynamic accumulator, so it really creates its own compost, a living, uh, it's a living compost effectively, and as those leaves uh, end up uh, getting buried by the new foliage coming out from the top, then those things just simply uh, end up helping to maintain uh, your uh, your soil nutrients. They stop the help to stop the erosion as well as the transpiration of your nitrogen, and so then your your plants will actually have uh, sufficient foods to be able to create the foliage. And then those foliage the foliage is the solar collector, so uh, you actually are able to create more fruiting. So recognize what you're dealing with out here as well. So the uh, uh, the content of this soil is such that right now. Um, nature is uh, not so, so much struggling to keep up, but it's taken a long time to actually get to this point. So what we're going to do is, is uh, take these indicators and we're going to improve upon the quality of the soil as we build.